Let's awesome. go. So you want to make your sled faster. You want to make it perform better. Everybody asks me these questions. I've got that old XLT or that old Formula 700. How do I make it run better? I want to have more power. I want a better hole shot. I want to go faster. It's a little boggy at the start. I'll give you a few pointers, things that I've done without getting too much into it. Like, yeah, you can make your sled go faster with nitrous or you can make it go faster with a turbo or you can make it go faster with a big bore and all that kind of stuff. But I'm more or less going to talk about the more simpler things you can do. Vent everything. Get all the heat out and make sure you use good screen so no snow gets in there. Any extra weight you're carrying around, it's just going to slow you down. Shed as much weight as you can. Check out my other video on shedding weight. You want to do that. Go with a performance exhaust. Depending on what you're going to do, you can call several exhaust manufacturers. Somebody like Greg at Jaws really knows what he's doing. If you want to drag on hill drags, he'll make the pipe specifically designed for you. If you want to go fast, you want top speeds, he can do that as well. Twin, single, triple pipes, the whole nine yards, he'll make sure everything fits nice and snug in there for you. Pipes do get expensive, but if you want the performance, you'll get them from there. If you want to run higher compression heads, you can do that. Just means you're not going to be able to run the cheap gas anymore. You know, you'll be running 94 octane. You might have to add some av gas in there because if you're running a higher compression, you've got to have more octane, higher octane fuel. But you're going to get more power. But just remember, when you make engine modifications, it could end up costing you money. Your engine's going to be working a little bit harder. Things have a tendency to break, right? And one of the first things I tell guys all the time, they say, oh, I just bought a new sled. How do I make it faster? Clean the carbs. Rebuild the carbs, get in there, change all the jets out, make sure everything's tuned the way it's supposed to be. You can get the MPEM or the computer reflashed. They might have a new curve for it, for your application. If you take something that was built for the trails, like this little rev here was, it's got a trail curve on it. It doesn't really work very well in the mountains or in the hills, so I had a, a hill curve put on it, if you will, something a little more powerful, something more set up for running those hills, long shots. You know, that's what you'll want to do. You can contact the Skidoo race team. They'll reprogram that MPEM for you. Put a snow sock on it. Keep the snow and ice and the tree bark and the branches and the mice and everything from getting inside that air box. You want to make sure it breathes too. You can put an SLP high flow air intake on there. It's going to help it breathe a lot better. And it also brings in cold air from the outside and that's what you want. All you guys running your K&Ns inside your engine compartment, you're pulling in extra hot air from around your motor and then driving it back through the motor again. You don't want that. You want the cold air from the outside. Cold air makes your snowmobile perform better. Now let's say you just bought yourself a snowmobile. It's got a good healthy motor on it. You've cleaned those carbs out. Everything's nice and fresh in there. Man, I don't know why, but everybody overlooks the clutches. If it has high kilometers on it or high miles, you want to get in here, you want to rebuild this clutch, or you want to take it apart, you want to have somebody look at it, go over the springs, make sure all the ramps, everything's in good working condition, the bushings aren't seized up in there. And for the secondary clutch, I just ditched the stock skidoo and I put this team tied on here. Man, I can't believe how well this clutch works and the iBack shift clutch kit in the primary is just amazing. We can only learn so much about our sleds, right? And when it comes to clutching, I really leave that to the pros. I call up Joey at iBackShift.com. He sets me up with the right kit for my application. I want to play in the hills and have fun in the deep powder. He makes it work in the primary clutch. I call up team and I say, hey, you know, I want to run in the powder. I weigh 185 pounds, maybe a little less. Uh, this is what my sled weighs. This is the kind of track I run on it. This is the altitude I'm running. They sent me this clutch all ready to go. I'm telling you, the performance you get out of a clutch like this, tuned for your application, is outstanding. I didn't have to do anything to these clutches all winter. I didn't have to fiddle around with very much. It was great. You can also put these little clickers on here. You know, depending on the type of day you're running, these are called quick clickers. If you're pulling up a hill, you notice you're not quite getting your top RPM, you can make a quick adjustment with these quick clickers here. You'll get your one or 200 RPM that you're going to need. Or maybe you might be turning too much RPM, you can ramp it down a little bit. Besides SLP with their hot air elimination kit and this high flow intake, JC's Custom Vents makes vents for all over your sled, whether it's a Skidoo, a Polaris, 
uh, Articat or Yamaha, he's got these little kits, man, I'm telling you, he can trick you right out. And it's letting that heat out and that fresh air in that's gonna make the big difference. JC's Custom Vents, tell him Louis sent you. I'm just doing some work on the sled so I don't have my rear suspension in, but a really cheap and easy thing to help your sled run better, scratchers, those things are awesome. With the Digitron, I was getting differences of about 20 degrees between scratchers up and scratchers down when I was riding on the trails. That's pretty substantial. If you want it to run cooler, which you do, you want to run those scratchers on those trails to get to the hill when you want to go play. Or if you're just trail riding, you're not getting that cooling that you need, drop those scratchers down, save your sled. A while on the topic of cooling, if you're a serious rider, you have had your sled overheat. You've looked down, you've seen the temperature gauge, it's either in the red, or the numbers are running up. We've all done it. it. Happens to me a couple times a season. It's just the way the conditions are. Sometimes we're running the big lugs on a hard packed trail. It doesn't take long to heat them up. That's why I run Evans waterless coolant in here. Performance gains, no. But for protection against overheat, it'll do it for you. Try to get that post forward. You want everything to come forward like that rider forward style. I did that with my ZX chassis. Ergonomically, it's better you're not as tired at the end of the day, and you just want to be up on the front of your sled, especially when you're putting out big horsepower. If you like playing in the powder like me, another little maybe handling performance gain, go with a shorter ski stance. You don't want it so wide. You know, it's kind of hard to flop over on its side and do the boondock and have fun in the powder. So you can make a little uh, narrower ski stance. There are lots of companies out there who make these chromoly arms here, like Alternative Impact. As Greg Balchin at JAWS says, you know, the manufacturers with their reeds leave a lot on the table as far as horsepower goes. So you put a high quality reed in there, get some more power out of it. Now one thing I noticed with this 800 motor in here, when you really hammer on it, these clutches want to come together. When that happens, you don't get the full travel of your belt, you're losing out on your power, losing your top end. SLP makes a torque arm, I'll show it here with the camera, that keeps your engine from moving and that's a really good little thing to have, it's not very expensive. I believe it's under 100 bucks. You can just slap that in, no more engine movement. But when it comes to suspension, you're going to want to lighten that up. The suspension on these older sleds, really heavy in the back end. Get rid of that thing, ditch that weight. Lots of used suspensions on the market right now, guys are ditching them. And while you're ditching your 121, you might as well get rid of that and put a 136 or a 144 on there, put a taller lug on. Most older sleds, stock sleds, come with, I don't know, a half inch, three quarter inch lug. Very little traction, horrible on the trail, horrible off trail. Put something with a taller lug on there, you're gonna love it a lot more. You know, a lot more guys are buying these older sleds, fixing them up, modding them out, more so than buying the new ones and riding those because, you know, I can almost get the same performance out of this as you can with a new sled. Now, you don't have to do all these mods I'm telling you to do. You can do them at your own pace, at your own rate. You can spread it out over two, three years. Some of these things are expensive to do, there's no doubt about it. But look online, you can get a lot of these parts used. The guys who are going from something like this to a newer sled, they often part these sleds out. You can pick up pipes nice and cheap, suspensions really cheap, these tracks or takeoffs. Check Tracks USA out, they're selling those Polaris tracks right now for, I don't know, 200 bucks, 250 bucks. Really cheap. Easy to get, easy to do. Thanks for coming, guys. Make sure you check out my other videos. Stay tuned for the IQR build and the land build we're going to do. We're going to do some fun stuff this winter. Thanks for watching.